Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Questions now for Kevin Anderson. It would really help if you put your hands up so I can uh, ask in turn. So, Kevin, you said after Roger you gave yourself a bit more belief this year. Is that what got you through that exhausting match? Um, yeah, I don't know what got me through today's match other than just a will to try and you know succeed and you know keep pushing myself. I mean, I knew it was going to be a tough match playing John. Uh, we played a few times. Um, he's gotten the better of me in our head-to-heads. I've sort of struggled against him in certain areas, and um, you know, just the, watching the way he'd played all week. Um, you know, I thought he was playing great tennis. Obviously, his serve is, you know, argue, arguably one of the best of all time. Um, it's really tough playing him. Um, you know, the match was so even throughout. Uh, I've obviously felt I had a few chances in the third set, serving for it, and. Um, you know, even in that breaker, uh, you know, had a set point, hit a double, but, you know, he played some great, you know, points. I think, you know, one of the reasons for the double was I felt like he was being really aggressive on my serve. It forced me to go for a little bit more. Um, and then, you know, once you're in the fifth set, in those sort of settings and on the court for over six hours and, you know, your body's, you know, it's really tough. You just have to try to keep going. So... You know, I tried as much as I could to just keep fighting. I mean, I take a lot of pride in that, and you know, fortunately, I was able to find a way over the finish line. Um, can you explain in the game at 24 rule what went through your head when you fell and managed to pick up your racket, and how how did you manage to think to do that? In yeah. Circumstances? <laughs> um, you know, at that point, you're just trying to gain, you know, gather some energy to try and you know keep pushing yourself. Uh, I felt. You know, for most of the fifth set, actually, I was, you know, maybe a little bit ahead in terms of how the ease of me, you know, me holding serve as opposed to him. I feel like I had a few openings here and there. And, you know, by the end, obviously, we were both struggling. I mean, you know, from his serve, he was down in terms of his velocity coming through. And I just try to just keep put as many balls as possible um, in the court and, you know, had another little opening at level 15. Hit a return. I felt like I lost my balance. I was like, just try get up, and you know, I'd obviously not a conscious thought. I just, you know, put the racket in my left hand and managed to hit a, you know, pretty decent shot. And uh, you know, obviously, that ended up being pretty key for me. Um, can you describe how close you were to breaking point physically? What what it feels like, felt like during that fifth set? On yeah, I mean, it's body? close. It's you know, you're really in a war of attrition out there it's way beyond a normal tennis match or tactics I mean it's just who's gonna you know outlast each other and you know it's pretty tough in that in the format that we have right now especially at slams I mean it's uh, it's not easy um, you know in that setting at the end I mean coming through that match it's obviously I'm ecstatic to be through to the finals but at the same time you know, you feel, you feel like it should be a draw. I mean, but you know, somebody has to win. You know, I was also s s behind the scoreline each time, so it's a little, little tougher maybe. Um, but you know, what I did really good each and every time I reset really well. I got off to good starts in the beginning of the games. I mean, only a couple times that I have like a left 15 or 15 30, and when you're in those settings. Just getting out in front a little bit definitely makes a big difference, um, and I was able to do that pretty consistently throughout that first set. One question, Kevin. How would you describe your emotions? You just described the physical attrition. What were your emotions like during the match as it wore on, and then at the end? Yeah, it was interesting because, like, emotionally, I felt okay. Um, you know, I was like, okay, come this this return game, I've got this. They, you know, let me try get in a few more returns and make a push here and. As hard as I was trying, I felt like physically it wasn't, you know, there as much, and it was sort of steadily digressing, I guess, um, or digress, you know, as the match went on. Um, I just kept on trying to say, you know, up my emotional energy. I mean, that's something I've been trying to do for a while, but it just was almost too difficult to do it. So, and even when I got the break in the first set, I kept sort of as calm as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main theme was just trying to bring out more it was a challenge though because a lot of the times uh, you know there was a lot of hope and you know the body just wasn't responding um the way that it was earlier in the match and then at the end yeah i mean at the end it's 
yeah, it was just such a unique matchup. I mean, when you, you know, that scoreline after that period of time, both of us obviously, you know, feeling it a lot and trying our best to, you know, push through. And as I said in the, you know, in my post-match interview of, obviously I'm very pleased to get through, but at the same time, you know, I definitely feel for John as well because it's, it's not easy losing, you know, matches at any, you know, regardless of the scoreline in this sort of setting semifinals at Wimbledon, but especially, you know, no sort of conditions with such a close scoreline. Sorry. Sorry, that in the, the, the post-match, post-match, you talked about using your left hand and growing up using your left hand. Can you sort of recast that a little bit? Yeah, I just sort of, uh, you know, when the interviewer asked me, it it gave me a bit of a, you know, a bit of a smile because obviously that was a pretty, you know, good point from my from my standpoint. Um, you know, I just said, you know when I was young I had elbow surgery at a pretty young age and actually played for about four or five months just with my left hand um, a lot of guys with two hands I mean you know can hit the ball left-handed but it was just you know interesting I because I hit it pretty well and I was just sort of reflecting I wouldn't have thought back then that I was going to use a, a left-handed shot at the semi-finals of Wimbledon at I don't know what the score was whatever it was you know when I uh, when I hit it uh, Kevin what is your normal physical recovery regime? Will it differ in this case? And, and what have you done up to this point, you know, in the last hour or so? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty unique. I mean, generally speaking, I, you know, for the matches over two hours, we do a, like an active recovery. So you get on the bike for say 10, for say 10 minutes or so. After that, we do a stretch and like an active flush. And then when I get into the ice tank and I eat afterwards and then I come to press. Um, you know, my physio, he laughs, he's like, well, after six hours, he's like, I don't think you need to spend another 10 minutes on the bike. So I actually went straight into the ice tank. Um, and then I did the stretching. Um, and I actually ate before stretching as well, because obviously trying to get sort of food and um, nutrition back in my body is, you know, a challenge because you definitely don't feel like eating, but you have to just somehow force it down. So um, you know, when I get back today, we have to sort of see, obviously I need a lot of treatment in terms of getting the body back balanced and stuff, but at the same time, obviously sleep is important too. And what about tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to play it by ear, see how I feel, see how my body reacts in the morning. You know, the feet are sore, they're swollen, um, the legs are pretty jelly-like, um, so I mean, ideally I'd like to get out and maybe hit just for say 30 minutes, just you know, keep the eye in. I mean, just try keep the same sort of routines that we've been having. Um, but uh, I think <laughs> I've never played a match this long, so I think it'll be, you know, something we'll have to see. You know, how 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 things go tomorrow. I know this may be an odd question after everything that's gone on today, but I noticed that both in the quarterfinals and today you were wearing black compression shorts. Uh, I was wondering, has anybody uh, at the All England Club, the, uh, the officials, have approached you about that? Yeah, I mean, so in the beginning, uh, the first match or two, I didn't. Um, I've been having a sort of reoccurring hamstring issue um, over the last 18 months. So my understanding is when there's a medical device, it is of color. Um, these aren't your normal compression shorts. They are pretty specialized, so that's why um, they they approved it and are allowing me to wear it. Kevin, uh, over the years you had a really fine career, uh, but there were also obstacles and no really huge breakthroughs. Now the you've reached the finals of arguably our, our two biggest tournaments. Just talk about this breakthrough, how did it happen, what does it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, along the way there's always sort of many breakthroughs. I feel like in terms of a broad picture, you know, making finals of Grand Slams. I mean, that's obviously a huge breakthrough, but, you know, along the way, there was many small breakthroughs. I mean, making top 10 in 2015, uh, beating Andy Murray in the round of 16 at the US Open, you know, almost beating Novak here, being up two sets to love, uh, losing very close in the fifth set, and, um, you know, then getting injured in 2016, you know, was tough. I mean, I think the biggest thing, as I've tried to sort of, say there's I don't feel like there's you know massive secrets it's you know I work really hard um, I have good goals um, 
I'm always looking to improve. I've got a great team behind me. I have a lot of support. Um, and I feel like, as I've been saying, some of my best tennis, I feel like, is still ahead of me. I mean, if <clears throat> I look at the game, I think there's still areas that I can do better, improve, both physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and I think more than anything, I've just really trusted the process. There's ups and downs. I mean, even in the last 12 months, I've made finals of US Open and now Wimbledon. Um, but at the same time, I've lost 7-6 in the third twice in uh, Indian Wells and Miami. Um, I was two sets to love up and served for twice at French Open to make quarterfinals. So, you know, there's been ups and downs even in the last little while. And I'm just always looking at learning, keep improving. Um, I feel like that's probably one of my biggest strengths is my ability to sort of keep at it, keep my head up. It's not easy at times. Um, you know, that's what I just keep on doing. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you know, keep it up because there's still a lot that I want to play for in terms of um, achievement. And will it be a problem coming back in 40 hours or so? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not going to be easy. It, it's not ideal. Obviously, I would like to be done a little bit sooner in terms of my recovery, playing against two of the greatest players of all time. Um, you know, I don't know what's happening out there now, but, uh, you know, it's tough on them as well. I mean, they've, you know, when you're planning your schedule and you're second on after one, you're not thinking you're going on at, you know, 8 p.m. So uh, it's tough on them too. Um, I mean, all I can do is control what I can control, do my best at being, you know, getting as recovered as possible. You know, starting this week off, I came in here with the goal of firstly beating my best result, but at the same time putting myself in this position. I think at the US Open, I, you know, was in the finals and maybe I felt sort of my crowning achievement was actually getting to the finals. So, you know, definitely hungry to go one step further. So I'm going to have to obviously pay a lot of attention to my recovery to try and give myself the best shot possible. Um, you obviously pushed this match quite late as well. How much attention will you now pay to what's going on there and how long it's going to last? Or do you prefer to sort of switch off and actually not think about yeah, that I mean, process? I mean, obviously I'll sort of have an eye out on what's going on. I mean, it's not going to be my primary focus watching them and trying to pick up notes. You know, my coach will obviously be doing that for me and so we can, you know, chat about it tomorrow or, you know, if they, I'm not sure what the, um, how long they can play for. So it'll be interesting if they, you know, do finish today or not. Um, obviously, I'm in a nicer spot that I've, you know, put myself through to the final. So I do get to recover. Obviously, it was a very long and taxing match. So um, uh, I'm going to be more focused on what I need to do. Kevin, you said in the uh, Flash interview that you felt that this match should uh, provoke a debate about final set tie breaks. Can you just elaborate on that? What would you like to see happen? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's no secret. I think a lot of, you know, if you ask the players, it's, you know, when you get stuck in these positions playing such long matches, it's, you know, it's very tiring. It's, you know, it's very tough playing six and a half hours, whatever we were out there for. Um, I, you know, I personally don't see the added value or benefit compared to you know saying at the you know US Open where we're playing tie breaks in the fifth set I mean it's no different you know decades ago when there was no tie breaks at all I mean you know matches were even longer then and you know I think progress was made to introduce a tiebreaker I personally don't see the reason not to include it now at least um, at all the slams I mean obviously John's match in 2010 when it was I mean, ridiculous. I feel like a lot of people were talking about it then. You know, things didn't change. Um, you know, it was also tough being out there and, you know, listening to some of the crowd. I mean, I don't know. Hopefully they appreciated the battle that we faced out there against each other, John and myself. But, you know, if you ask most of them, I'm sure they would have preferred to see a fifth set tiebreaker too. I mean, they've paid to watch two matches and, you know, they came close to pretty much only seeing one match. So I, I don't see the other, you know, opposing view of you know not not in, incorporating a you know f a, a first set tiebreak at all the slams um, following on from that do you think i mean potentially that this next semi won't be finished today do you think that will maybe act as a wake-up call yeah i mean i must be honest i was thinking that during the match when you know i'm like it gets kind of ridiculous at some point in time when it's you know late in the first set it, over 20 all uh, and uh, I can feel that the the crowd as I said earlier I mean 
they pretty antsy <laughs> for us to get off the court. I mean, they've been watching us for over six hours. And uh, um, I mean, now, it, yeah, as I said earlier, it pushes these guys back as well. It's not ideal for them either to potentially having to come back and play tomorrow. Um, you know, even if there's like a middle ground, I mean, obviously in a match like today, it's pretty historic in terms of the length. I mean, you know, it feels great to be part of it and, you know, coming through. Maybe there's a middle ground that we can include a tiebreaker. Maybe it's a 12 all. I mean, I think that's a pretty, you know, fair balance. If a match is 12 all in the fifth set, I don't think it needs to, you know, continue. I think at that point, you know, the amount of times it gets to that point is pretty rare. And I think it protects the player's health as well because being out there for this length can, you know, can be pretty, you know, damaging from a health standpoint too. We've got time for two short more questions. Kevin, what does it mean to you to fly the flag for South Africa in a Wimbledon final? Yeah, I mean, it feels great. Obviously, there was a whole lot that happened today in terms of the length of the match. But at the end of the day, I've put myself into the finals of Wimbledon, which is, you know, half of a dream come true. I mean, really, uh, you know, it's one of, arguably, I mean, most people would say the biggest tournament we have. It's very special, you know, growing up in South Africa when, you know, we had kind of sort of limited access to available tournaments. I mean, you know, Wimbledon was, you know, the most iconic event. So to be here and in the finals, <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. I've had so much support from home, um, you know, and as I said, after my previous match, I really hope that uh, uh, it's just a source of inspiration for kids and just interest in you know tennis because there's ten South Africa does have a, a strong tennis history it, we've struggled over the last sort of decade or so um, it's not easy it takes a lot of time but I hope maybe somebody sits here in 10 15 years time and somebody you know asks him a question and he says well he watched me playing at Wimbledon and that's one of the reasons he's there that would definitely be you know great for me to hear kind of all, all four semifinals are in the 30s um, might speak to the evolution of training and nutrition uh, and understanding. Do you think that's a trend that we'll see, whether that'll become a trend, uh, or is this kind of a... Yeah, I mean, obviously it'll be imp impossible to predict, but definitely right now, if you look at all the guys in their 30s, I think everybody's incredibly motivated. That's, you know, step number one. I mean, I think a while ago, if you looked at some of the guys reaching 30, they've been on tour for a while, I think their interest and their motivation to keep pushing their bodies, keep training, keep traveling the world, naturally just gets a little bit less. And there's been a resurgence where people don't feel that way. And I've said, I think when you see one person doing it, it changes the perspective and the mindset as well. Seeing Roger, you know, at 37, have the results that he's had and the success and what he's still striving for makes me feel at 32. Like, I mean, I've still got a lot of years, you know, in front of me. Um, it changes the whole dynamic. I mean, without a doubt, the, uh, as you said, the training, I think, uh, you know, it continues to guys take a lot of um, time and energy into their bodies. I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot to play for. There's been, you know, I think great increases in, you know, player, you know, revenue splits in terms of prize money. People, players want to keep playing. I mean, uh, this is what we do for a living. So I think as long as we keep enjoying it, um, keep motivated, uh, at least for now, I think you'll see that trend going. After that, obviously, it's you know it will be very tough to say. Willie, last question, just one. Kevin, what are the feelings and memories from this experience today that you think will last with you? Yeah, I mean, just it's so brief. I mean, obviously, pretty two special matches for me now. <laughs> you know, beating Roger Federer here at Wimbledon, 13-11, and then today's match, uh, it was just unbelievable match. So. You know, as much as possible, um, you know, I'm trying to put that to the side a little bit because, you know, I have a finals to play in, you know, not that long a period of time. So, you know, definitely when the tournament is finished, regardless of what happens, I think there'll be a lot to think back on. But, you know, right now I'm as focused as possible of being as ready as I can on Sunday. And I think that also involves just coming down emotionally too because it was a very emotional match. I was a very emotional after the match. Um, and I need to sort of reset as much as possible for Sunday. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, much. guys. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>